Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Drew, a.k.a. Redrew89, and welcome to Drew's News. This first installment of a new series that I'm going to be making is going to be a vlog-style format series where I basically discuss things that are going on with my channel and other things that, uh, that have, pertain to community interaction and so on and so forth. The game in the background is Batman Arkham City. So, to get started, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick little self-introduction to uh, benefit those of you who are new to the channel, who have not seen any of my other previous work. So, I will go ahead and say, uh, I am Drew, aka the Redrew89, obviously. I am a 24-year-old male living in the United States, on the uh, in the northeastern United States. I have been a gamer and computer enthusiast for pretty much my entire life. So that's pretty much all there is to know about me. Um, I enjoy a wide variety of games, from first-person shooters to RPGs to JRPGs to puzzle games to creative sandbox games like Minecraft in particular. So that's pretty much all there is to say about me specifically. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into one of the other things that I wanted to mention as well. Let's go ahead and talk about video schedules, because this was something that I wasn't very good at with previous channels that I made. I was never good at sticking to a set schedule, and I want to try and change that for this channel. So, those of you who are just tuning in, you'll notice that uh, there is only one video currently on the channel available to watch, and that is the first episode of The Tale of a Lori Liadre, and that is an Elder Scrolls Skyrim Let's Play. You can go ahead and check that out if you like, and that series is going to be on a set schedule. Weekly episodes on Saturdays, usually at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, when you get up Saturday morning, check your sub box, and you should see a new episode of that series every week. And if that's not the case, I will do my best to try and let people know ahead of time, um, through, you know, whatever means I have available at the time, you know, things come up in real life, can't always stick to my schedule, so I want to make sure that people are aware of that, and uh, I'm going to do my best to be consistent, and then this series that, uh, that I'm creating right now, the Drew's New series, that is going to be, it's not going to be on a very set schedule, but I'm going to try to do it bi-weekly, uh, Wednesdays, also releasing at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you are into the whole community interaction thing, you want to hear what's on my mind, and at any particular point, uh, keep an eye out for that every other week. With that also, I do have intentions of making other series as well, just so that I can expand my channel and, and continue to produce great content for people to watch. And those will be announced as I kind of as I decide what I want to do with them, and their schedules will be determined as I go as well. So I'll make sure that uh, when new series are being produced that I'm consistent about letting people know what the schedule is going to be for that. I think that covers that. So the next topic that I want to discuss, and this is going to be our main topic for this episode, I want to talk briefly about video monetization and content management, more specifically in the realm of copyright management. In the past, uh, working, making Minecraft Let's Play videos um, in previous channels, I never really had much of an issue with copyright considerations. I have had experience with copyright issues before my uh, foray into video game Let's Play production. Uh, I had done some stuff in the past with making... Uh, uh, this was way back in high school as well, uh, making anime music videos, and unfortunately that ended up uh, <laughs> causing me to run afoul of uh, content ID restrictions and stuff like that way back when YouTube was still pretty new to that sort of thing. Um, so uh, I, I, I know firsthand how difficult it can be for content creators to make content that is uh, legally responsible, especially with respect to uh, making sure that the content they are using is permissible to use, and uh, furthermore, permissible to uh, profit from. Um, that is something that a lot of new content creators are kind of confused about, like, what can I produce, what can I upload to YouTube, and what can I benefit from, what can I monetize, how can I monetize my videos without... Uh, 
uh, without upsetting someone else that may have a copyright to the content that I'm uploading. So one of the things that I've noticed since I started making videos again is that YouTube has fully impl implemented the system that they use called Content ID. And what that is, is it's essentially a system where content copyright owners for various uh, various forms of entertainment, whether it's music, movies, video games, etc. They can essentially opt into the system where then uh, when a content creator on YouTube uploads a video, that video is screened and reviewed for third-party copyrighted content. And videos are, uh, YouTube is generally, I don't know, they're, they're, they seem to be, there are pros and cons with it. Uh, a lot of the pros are the fact that, you know, those people, those organizations, companies, and so on and so forth that have a wide, you know, a broad catalog of content, of copyrighted content, can very easily keep track of that content, and when they, uh, when they have issues with people uploading, you know, bootlegged copies of their content, they can, they have a generally a very quick, uh, way to address that through Content ID, and it's also beneficial to, um, to content creators on YouTube because then they can be uh, assured that they will be notified rapidly if uh, through, you know, through some mistake of their own, not saying, not suggesting malicious intent, but through some mistake of their own, uh, they are aware of potential copyright issues with their content. And that actually pertains to me because uh, I did have, <laughs> in recording the first few episodes of Elori Leodre, I had a, m uh, a small problem with um, with a mod that I had added, uh, and I'm not going to go ahead and I'm not going to go into too many details, but I had added a mod that through this guy or through the Steam Workshop that uh, that added um, additional music to the in-game soundtrack, and um, I didn't really read the description very thoroughly. I thought that it was all kosher and whatnot, but uh, turns out that some of the songs added by that particular mod were uh, were from soundtracks to popular movies and other video games, um, in particular the Lord of the Rings franchise, um, and so on and so forth. So inadvertently, I had recorded uh, one episode of my uh, of my Let's Play series with that mod enabled, and, of course, some of the tracks made it into the actual gameplay footage. And when I went to try and monetize that video, it said, nope. Uh, I, I basically got, got told that uh, there was third-party content in the video, and as such, I wasn't going to be able to monetize that video for ad revenue, which is a minor disappointment to me. Uh, as someone who has in the past, invested significant time into making Let's Play videos and, and producing content for YouTube for other people to enjoy. I always felt that the idea of being able to monetize my videos, monetize my content, and benefit from the ad revenue that I can get from that is an excellent opportunity for me to, you know, to see a tangible benefit from what I'm doing. And it's not that that's the sole focus of what I'm doing right now. The, the, the sole focus of what I am doing with this channel is more often than, uh, than anything meant to be uh, a way to express my enjoyment of video games, my enjoyment of technology, and otherwise share that enjoyment with a broad audience, and perhaps maybe even expose people to games that they might not have otherwise been aware of. So that is something that I feel strongly about because, you know, um, we see lots and lots of content on YouTube, particularly for video games, and the ability to be able to share gameplay of a game that, that a person may enjoy so that other people can see it and say, oh, cool, I didn't know that this game existed, or I didn't realize how fun this game is. This looks cool. I'm going to go buy a copy, you know? That, it's beneficial to a lot of people. It's beneficial to the content provider, to the, or to the content creator, because they're getting further exposure from people who are saying, hey, check out this guy. He plays really cool games and stuff. You know, you should check him out and watch his videos and, and subscribe to him and stuff. And then you also have the benefit to the original game producer because their content, their game, is getting exposed to more and more people so they can see that as uh, an opportunity to gain more sales. And then it's beneficial, of course, to the viewer because they are being exposed to new games that they will enjoy, to content that they will find interesting 
and that they will benefit from that through the entertainment that they derive. So I feel that that, you know, I feel strongly about that whole three-way partnership, really, that three-way relationship between the viewer, the content creator, and the original game producer. On the other hand, though, um, it's difficult to be able to produce content sometimes, especially with games where the rules as to what pertains, what consists of fair use is not always very clearly defined. And what I mean by fair use is, um, fair use is a legal concept here in the United States where content creators can derive from existing media as long as they are not trying to detract from the original media. Um, There's a lot of legal jargon that goes with that, basically. Um, The way I see it is what I'm doing as a Let's Play creator is creating content that allows people to see games that they that they may have not have been aware of, that they may have already been aware of, but might not have considered purchasing because they didn't think they would enjoy it. For instance, the game in the background, Batman Arkham City. I had never had the uh, I had never had an interest in playing uh, this particular franchise of games because I was never you know I was never much of a superhero kid or a comic book kid or anything like that. Um, so I never really got into that type of game, and then. I, I, I actually purchased it through a Humble Bundle, so I'll throw that out there. I purchased my copy of, uh, of both Arkham Asylum and Arkham City through a Humble Bundle, and shortly after starting to play them, I realized, man, these are some really fun games, you know? I can I can get into this. So being able to share that with other people and being able to say, hey, look, check out this game. Isn't it awesome? Uh, that, to me, is definitely, uh, definitely enjoyable. And I know I'm kind of repeating myself here, but the point I want to get to really with this little rant here is that with the with the whole issue that I encountered with the mod that I had added to my playthrough in the tale of Illori Liadre, uh, I've, I've since decided that because of that issue and because of the fact that through other sources on the internet, I found that Bethesda actually stipulates that content producers are not necessarily, it's, it's non-commercial basically. Uh, Bethesda prefers that those who produce videos based around their content, their games, are not being released for personal gain, and that I can understand. That you know, I'm not a, uh, I'm not against that necessarily. Certainly, Bethesda created the Elder Scrolls franchise. They reserve the right to tell consumers how they can use their product. It's you know, it's law 101 basically. Uh, so that. Uh, with that, you know, with that in mind, I've, I've since decided that from this point forward, and I've already gone through and disabled monetization on the first episode of uh, The Tale of Alori Liadre, there will be no ads on any episode of that series. So that series will be completely ad-free, and that is a courtesy to you guys, as well as simply me throwing up my hands and saying, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to have to worry about, you know, my content being thrown into limbo or, or being removed completely from YouTube because of something that I may not have been aware of or something that I didn't realize was a problem. So I want to avoid that as much as possible. Other series may be ad supported. I will make that judgment call based upon the track record that the publisher has as far as allowing content creators to monetize their videos featuring their content. So based on how, you know, based on the information that I'm able to find regarding that. And of course, one of the other things that I'll make sure I do is as I decide to produce games with, uh, or produce (laughs) videos with particular games, I will try to see if there's any recourse for me to contact the publisher and say, hey, look, I want to make a video of your game, I want to make a video series of your game, what is your stance on monetization of those videos so that I can get something back from it. It's not even that I feel as though I deserve to get something back, it's just that it's an additional bonus really, because like I've said before, the point of what I'm doing right now is not about the money, it's not about the numbers, it's not about ad revenue, it's it's about having fun, and I think everybody can understand that. So yeah, I think that's about it for that particular rant, but I didn't want to talk about that briefly for a moment to get that out in the open. That covers that. Then the other thing I wanted to talk about, I want to go ahead and get some thoughts from the audience. I know you're out there. I want to get some feedback on what games you guys would like to see me do aside from the current series that I'm producing with The Elder Scrolls Skyrim. 
I don't know. I might be able to throw one more series into the mix without getting too bogged down, and that's something I want to try to avoid, because that was something that I had issues with in the past. Um, even though I was only making one series, I was producing videos on a daily basis, or on a every other day basis, because I was spending so much time recording footage and, and making video, editing video, uploading video, I didn't have any time to sit down and enjoy what I was doing, so... It's something I want to try to avoid, and not only that, but my real-life schedule is actually kind of, sort of, almost full. I, I mean, I currently work part-time, and I'm looking at another part-time job to take up the other portion of my week. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to be able to juggle two jobs and this. But I, I do believe that I, I, I could reasonably do my current series, as well as making these occasional videos here and there every other week to let you guys know what's going on and if there's anything pertinent that I need to talk about. And then one other series to do something different. And that's what I want to do. I want to try to do something different for the other series that I'm going to end up releasing. So the other games that I had in mind for uh, another series, um, this game in particular that you're watching right now, Arkham City, or Arkham Asylum, if people want to see Arkham Asylum first and then move into Arkham City because Arkham City is, is a sequel, of course, to Arkham Asylum. So if you want to see Arkham Asylum, that's a valid option. Also, another valid option is the Half-Life series. A uh, great series of games, and uh, it's a first-person shooter, so it's definitely a departure from you know RPG-type stuff that I'm doing right now with Skyrim. Um, there's also, of course, the option of doing Minecraft videos again. That is something I might consider... I haven't quite nailed down, nailed down the details yet. I know I don't want to do vanilla Minecraft, because it doesn't hold my interest anymore. Even with the, late, the, most, the most recent version of Minecraft, vanilla just, I don't know, it just, after a while there's not a whole lot you can do. So I'm thinking a modded playthrough, or a modded let's play in Minecraft would be preferable. Either the Direwolf 20 Mod Pack 4 1.6.4, or... I've been watching a lot of, and I'm going to throw the shout out out there to Mr. Bacon Donut over at Twitch TV. He's a uh, he's a great deck, a great guy, um, and I highly recommend that you check his stream out. I'll throw a link in the description to his channel. He usually streams in the evenings, six days a week or six nights a week, and he's a great guy. He, you know, he's a lot of fun to hang out with and and watch him. And he's been currently playing Minecraft with the Mad Pack, which is an interesting mod pack that looks to be pretty challenging, I will say. So I think I might, if, uh, if people are interested in seeing me try that, I might try my hand at that. Or I could also try, you know, a Feed the Beast incarnation, you know, one of the, one of the more recent incarnations of the Feed the Beast mod pack, because I do enjoy some of the content with that. Another option, of course, is the Tomb Raider franchise, which is actually something that I wouldn't mind doing. I actually, a while back, over the last, or one of the previous recent Steam sales, I picked up the entire Tomb Raider collection, including the latest one, and I gotta say, I played through the latest Tomb Raider game. It's been a long time since I've done anything with that series. Great games, and I would be more than happy to do something like that. And then, of course, I do also have a couple of the other games from the Elder Scrolls franchise. I have Morrowind and I have Oblivion. If I'm not mistaken, Arena and Daggerfall are now free to download from Bethesda, so that's also another option. So I don't know if that's something that people really want to see. I will consider it because I haven't actually played Arena or Daggerfall. I would consider it, you know. I would consider playing through a couple of the classic Elder Scrolls games just for that nostalgia factor, just to, you know, look back at the beginnings of what has become one of the most well-known role-playing game fantasy genre series, and that's another option. I don't really want to do that concurrently with Ilori Liadre because I'm afraid playing too much of the same type of game will burn me out as well, so if that is something that people want to see, it'll probably end up waiting until after the completion of Alori Liadre, and then see how that goes from there. But that is what I want to what I want to have uh, what I want to hear from you guys. You know, those of you watching out there, let me know what you want to see. I'm gonna basically I'm not gonna do anything um, with a new series for probably a month or so. I'm gonna give it until the end of February. I'm gonna give it one month from the 30th of January. So 30th of February, a month from now, I will take whatever 
feedback I've gotten from uh, from the audience at that point, and based upon what I'm hearing from people who are watching, I will decide at that point what uh, other series I want to create at that time. I get a feeling it's going to be a lot of Minecraft out there. A lot of people are going to be are going to be telling me that they, that I need to play Minecraft, and um, I'm not against that idea. I mean, I'd still play from time to time. Everybody everybody has their preferences. And me, I mean, I played Minecraft for I played Minecraft. Um, exclusively for practically a year straight, so I sometimes difficult to to get the interest uh, needed necessary to uh, to really put uh, some time into that. But in any case, I'll wait to to hear what people are going to tell me there. Also, I want to throw out a mention to the fact that if uh, those of you out there want to have a good way to keep an eye on what I'm doing. I do have a blog, which I will link in the description, and I might even throw an annotation into this video. And then I also have a Twitter page that I don't really use all that often because I, I currently have no use for it up until like now. But I do have a Twitter page if people want to check that out as well. Again, all of this will be linked in the video description so that you guys can check that out. If you want to follow me on Twitter or you want to keep my blog bookmarked, go right ahead. Uh, neither of those are things that I update frequently, but I'm going to try and get better about that so that um, so that people know what's going on and yeah, <laughs> try to keep up with the community interaction because that's something I, I always wanted to to be a part of. I always wanted to be a part of a good community of people who who enjoy what I do and and we both you know have we both have that mutual benefit out of it so. I believe that's about everything that I wanted to cover for this episode of Drew's News. Thank you for watching, guys. If you uh, if you like what I'm doing so far, definitely let me know. Leave a comment, like my videos, you know. And if you want to see more, definitely click that subscribe button because it helps me out. It uh, helps the channel grow. It helps me get more viewers because you know I like I like sharing. I like sharing with people. What can I say? And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching, guys. Until next time. Take care. Please, find Nora. She's all I have left. It's over.